in this video, we are going to talk about relative extremes. A um, couple of quick definitions first. A critical point is an x value where the derivative of a function equals 0 or the derivative of a function does not exist. We'll call those critical values. They're going to be important to us. Um, the next definition is a relative maximum. The same thing will apply to a relative minimum, just opposite. A relative maximum is a point on a graph, or point on a function, whose y value is higher than all y values in its neighborhood. Neighborhood is a sometimes technical, but sometimes kind of casual way of saying all the numbers really, really close. This point right here is a relative max because all the other y values near it are below that y value. Uh, we'll get to, I don't want to spend too much time on that definition because it's one of those situations where it just means exactly what it sounds like it means. A relative max is a point that's higher than the points around it. Um, but finding that relative max or relative min is what we're really going to focus on today. So there are two ways to find um, a relative min or relative max. They both, let's call the first derivative test and the second derivative test. They both come at critical points. So notice how uh, both of these methods that are on the screen right now, we'll fill out in a second, start at a critical point. At any critical point x equals c, if f prime of x switches from positive to negative, then f of c is a maximum. Just a quick drawing to show what that looks like. Here's c. The reason why c is a critical value is because f prime of c, the derivative at that point, is 0. You can see there's a horizontal tangent here. And the derivative of f is positive, meaning f, of f is increasing before x equals c, and negative after x equals c, which means f prime of x switches from positive to negative, so fc must be a maximum. Of course, the flip side of that is if f prime of x switches from negative to positive, f of c is a max is a minimum. Sorry, I should say a relative minimum. This is what we call the first derivative test. We've done things like this. We've spoken about this before, how when the derivative switches from positive to negative, that means a function switches from increasing to decreasing. Uh, the other test is called the second derivative test. Oh, one thing I want to point out before we move on. Notice how I don't care about the sign of f prime of c itself. Because f prime of c is 0, so it's neither positive nor negative. So we don't check or we don't care about the sign of f prime at c exactly. We care about the sign of f prime before c or after c. Okay, that's going to be very different in the next one. At any critical point x equals c, if f double prime of c is negative, that means f of c is a relative max.
The reason why we can see that that's the case is look at the drawing I have up here of a relative max. Throughout this section of the graph, where the critical point is a relative max, notice that this function, the green function that I drew, is concave down, which means that the second derivative is negative. So at that critical point, if the second derivative is negative, then f of c is a relative max. If the second derivative of c is positive, f of c is a relative minimum. because the only way for that to happen, the only way for there to be a critical point, meaning uh, f prime of c is equal to zero, we have that horizontal tangent here, the only way this could be a relative minimum is if the function through this section is, or at that point I should say, is concave up. And so that is how we can see that there's a relative minimum.